The starting point of this How to Play Piano tutorial is middle C. We can create a major scale using only the white keys going up on the keyboard. The C major scale is an easy one because it consists entirely of white keys. So let's play the white keys in order, starting at middle C. The note directly to the right of middle C is a D. As we continue moving to the right we play E, F, G, A, B and then finally return to C. The last C is an octave higher than middle C. This sequence of notes is the C major scale. The scale doesn't need to begin in middle C, it can start and end on any C on the keyboard. Now that you know a scale, we have an important building block to music. From the notes in that scale we're able to build chords. The chords we start with are called triads, or three note chords. An easy way to remember where the C is, is to look at the pair of black keys. They look like chopsticks, and to the left of the chopsticks there's a C. This is the same in every position on the keyboard. The first chord we build is the C chord, which is made up of the notes C, E and G. The next chord is the F chord, which is made up of the notes F, A and C. The last chord we build is made up of the notes G, B and D, and is called a G. After you build the chords, you add the root of each chord in the left hand and then play them in succession. Note, the root note of the chord determines the name of that chord. Back to the three note chords you've just discovered. If you play those three notes in order, you may find they have a choppy sound to them. You can smooth that sound out using what are called chord inversions. Play a C chord. Now, keeping your first finger on the C, Move the other two and play an F note and an A note. Take a look at the notes you've just played. C, F and A. Remember an F chord is made up of the notes F, A and C. What you just played is an F chord with the C on the bottom instead of the top. Moving the notes around in this manner is called inverting the chord. Another way to invert a chord is to take the root note and put it on top. When you do that to a G chord, you end up with the notes D, B, G. Now when you play all three chords together, using the proper inversions, it sounds much more smooth and melodic because your hands aren't jumping around the keyboard as much. It's also a little bit easier to play. The left hand plays the root note of the chord you play with your right hand. So, when your right hand is playing a C chord, the left hand plays the root note C. The root note is simply the note that the chord is named after. When you play a bar of C, and then one of F, followed by a G, going back to C, we are creating a musical phrase. This particular type of phrase is called a chord progression, because you are progressing through a series of chords. C, F, G, C is what you call a 1, 4, 5 progression. The 1, 4, 5 progression is made of the chords based on the first note, the fourth note, and the fifth note of the C major scale. Chord progressions are normally given using Roman numerals, and that is how they'll be represented from this moment on. Find all the three note chords of the C major scale and practice their inversions. Each of the three notes in a major chord, the root, third and fifth, comes from the major scale with the same root note. You must be wondering how to make a basic rock and roll from the schedule in 4-4 meter, consisting of 4 times C, followed by 2 times F, then 2 times C, and 1 times G, 1 times F, 1 times C, and lastly 1 times G. This means playing the chord on each beat. Use your left hand to play the root note on every beat while playing. Any time you play two or more notes at the same time, you are playing harmony. The distance between any two notes is called an interval. An interval is measured on a scale. The C major scale below shows you each scale tone, numbered from 1 to 8. These numbers help to measure and recognise intervals. 
For example, a very common interval in music is the fifth. It's used in tons of chords and tons of melodies. Using the C scale above, a fifth is from C, 1, to G, 5. It's very easy maths, just count the notes. Other fifths are found in a similar way. For example, D to A, E to B, F to C, G to D, and so on. Get the idea? Try playing all the fifths in the C major scale using your thumb and pinky. Here is a handy tool for finding major third intervals. A root note and a major third interval always have three piano keys, either black or white, between them. For example, C to E, D to F sharp, E to G sharp, F to A, G to B, A flat to C are all major third intervals. You can count them out on the keyboard. Add this note, a major third, between various roots and fifths and you have a bunch of major chords to choose from. Concentrate on how the different chord feels under your fingers. You can think about the feel or shape of the chords in three different ways. Some of the major chords feel flat and level. C, F, G, first finger, third finger and fifth finger. Some major chords have a triangle shape. D, A, E, first finger, second finger and fourth finger. Some major chords have a V shape. A flat, E flat, D flat. First, second, and third finger. Try playing some major chords with both hands at the same time and notice the feel and shape of each. Learn the name of each chord and remember, major chord names are easy. They're always the same as the root note. Before going back to the 1, 4, 5 basic rock and roll progression, you need to know that for using the correct fingering while playing, we say that the 1 stands for your thumb, 2 stands for your index finger, and so on till 5, your pinky. This numbering applies the same for your left hand. The thumb is 1 and your pinky is 5. Building a major scale, the formula. When you take a closer look at the C major scale, it is very clear on a piano keyboard how it's constructed out of whole and half steps. The interval from C to D has a black key between. That's called a whole second, or interval. When you look at the distance between E and F, you don't see a key between the two. This is half a second. Analyzing the steps in a C major scale, you come to the following formula. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. It doesn't matter on what key you start, when building a major scale, the formula is always the same. This is the reason why we use sharps and flats in music notation, and why some key signatures make use of many black keys and others don't. And these sharp signs are called sharps, not hashtags. The secret to playing a good rock and roll is hidden in your left hand. We know it has a 4-4 time signature, meaning there are 4 beats per bar, and a quarter note equals 1 beat. Your left hand is going to be the motor for this 1-4-5 rock. With each bar of C, you will play with your left hand C, E, F, G. Hitting one tone each beat using 5, 3, 2, 1 as the correct fingering. With a bar of F, you'll play F, A, B flat, C, again with the correct fingering. B flat is the black key directly on the left of the B. As you've guessed, in case of a bar with a G, you'll play G, B, C, D on each beat. Except for the last bar, there you repeat the root note, in this case, the G. So putting all the notes together for a single round of the complete 1-4-5 progression with the left hand gives the following results. With the right hand, you play the chord as half notes. This means playing on every first and every third beat in a bar. Try to make use of inverting the chords. Start in a slow tempo and try to play as steadily as you can. 
use a metronome and after a while start increasing the tempo. Make sure you don't leave spaces in timing when moving from the 1 to 4 position and in the last section, 5, 4, 1, 5. Practice, practice, practice and practice again. <laughs>